Good, good. Good to meet Good you, to meet Larson, right? Who's this you got? Her name is Cheyenne. Cheyenne? Yep. <laughs> is this your daughter? No, it's his daughter. Okay. Yep. So you sure are pretty. I like that dress you got on. <laughs> I'm Henry Martin. Henry? Good yeah. to meet you, buddy. So, you got some mules down through here too, huh? We do, yep. A few in here. Yeah, well this is a nice barn you've got here. It is. Nice. We're trying to build something like this for a motor home, not this big, but with a bathroom and stuff, yeah. so when we come back, have a place to go. Yeah. That'd be good. Yeah, we like this. So you've been out, what have you been doing out with them this morning? We went down and just took some videos of them in the traffic and down on the highway. In the traffic. Yeah. Driving them on the road. Right. We're down to produce auction and eat while we're down there. <laughs> okay, so it's not far. You wouldn't come in from that way. Oh, it's just about five miles down the road. To, uh, to Liberty or what are you doing? No, just the community here, South Fork community. This is South Fork yep. community, okay. Yep, it's just about five miles down the road. We went down and got us a hamburger and took some videos and pictures of them down there this morning. Well, we should have got here early today. Now we're going to get them a drink and then we're going to let them rest just a little bit. And then we're going to take them over and hook them in the mower machine. Right there. That's where I want to. Yeah. Come. Hey. Hey. Come. Oh, yeah? Okay. We'll get them up here. Which is it? That's the first one. Hey. Hey. It's like 12 foot and then it'll go along and cut the tops off that way if we know it's a big storm coming we'll get that thing in and crank it up on a big six inch bar with a cable up i ain't sure it gets six six or twelve well you can plant eight nine ten twelve it gets six rows going one way so we got 12 rows planted and track rows in between so we can cut the heads off so it don't go down Yep. So we're getting a picture of this coming by the sorghum. Is that what we're looking yeah. for? Okay. Yeah. The mules coming past the so you got six acres of sorghum here that yep. you got. So six acres of sorghum, about ten acres of pumpkins back at the house and then mums. So that is showing how well they do around vehicles, I guess. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, because a lot of people 
take them out and do carriage rides with them and do commercial businesses with them like in town and everything so you got to show that they're safe in the traffic too so so how long have you been uh, been doing training like this since 2010 yeah yeah what, what got you into it i have no idea no idea <laughs> just started just started it kind of started by an amish guy asked me if i wanted to video a horse for him oh yeah and i done it and well. sold it <laughs> and it just started from there. <laughs> how it just that? happened. Well, did, how did you do uh, back then? Did you put it on YouTube then too? Or? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. my first video went on in 2010, I think. Yeah. 2010 or 11. So. Yeah. so I've been putting them on ever since. Long so. time. Yeah. <laughs> How do you train them? Just get them the experience of being out around traffic and just taking them oh, out? Oh yeah, it's just repetition. Just you know, them. you just start start doing it and working. working them. The more you work them, the more the better they're going to get. Yeah. Some mules are better than others. You know, you got some that just won't ever handle it, and you got some that's fine the first day you ever try. It just depends. It's all in the difference of the mule. Hey. That's a nice little Johnson's grass patch up there. Can we mow that? Sure. We can, or is that? Yeah. Okay. That patch of Johnson grass right up there. We're going to mow it down just for demonstration. It'll be enough room. Back up on the same road was on then. On this gravel road, yeah. Just right, right before you get to the blacktop, that green, you know, small stuff. Yeah. Okay. Right there. Yeah, we're going to hook these so he, he switched the sides on them? Yeah, we just wanted to switch them to see if they hook a little better that way. Okay. Dude. Oh, that dude. Whoa. Right. Right. Did you find a toy? What is that? I notice you're speaking a different dialect. Is that Pennsylvania Dutch? Yep. Yeah. Well, that's what we speak at home. At home. Uh, I mean, we we do some English, but she can she can understand you real good and stuff, but she can't talk it real real good. Oh, so that's why she's not talking to me so much. Wow. Well, she's not not she's not familiar with English so much. I got that you. That and she yeah, she acts to like to act a little shy, but she ain't. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to go out and see if we can cut some grass out here. Sure. Hey, Thor's jammed up. I should have got him more speed before I went into it. It was part of my fault. So the family that owns this farm, they do they use no tractors? No. They they use all horses, yeah. Is that pretty common in this area for the Mennonite families? Well, they're actually what we call the Amish. Amish. We're we're Mennonites and they're Amish. It's, we believe the, in the same God, but we live a little different lives. Yes.
I'll be down to fish. This people that live here are Swartz and Trooper Amish. Right. And our mowing machine's down at another farm, so we asked them if we could borrow theirs to make the video, and they said we could. Okay. So, yeah. There's different sects here. There's the Mennonites, there's the Swartz and Trooper Amish, Old Order Amish, Holderman, the Mennonites, a church group they call Charities. There's Probably about 10 different types of Mennonite mama here in this community. Gotcha. Eating like two. And then we got a little baby in the house yet. His, oh. name's, his name's Winston. Where's the water hose? Go inside. Show the water hose back there, will back. I think Stephen's thirsty. We are thirsty. We're going to go out there and drink out of the water hose. We have wow. to. <laughs> wow. Wow. Hair. What are you doing? Let them get some shade and yeah, cool. Yeah, them rest, cool off a minute. So tell me about your buggy. What's this? Is for your? Is this for your lights? Yeah. In case you for night or turn signals or night. Yep. So I don't use it a whole lot after dark. But yeah, that's what it's for. Okay. So this is is this your main transportation? Well, we got an, another buggy out there in the shed that is. This is basically for this video and yeah. So so no vehicles. No, nope. no, not for us, no. No. So I notice you've got the the rubber tires. So your church is okay with the tire, the rubber tires. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Get this down again. Yeah. Out there's my pumpkins that I was telling you about. Oh, I see them. Wow, that's a lot of pumpkins. So how do you how do you sell the mums? Let's talk about the mums and since we're right here in front of them. How how you wholesale them, retail them? I haul them to an auction. A auction? Yep. We right. got a I got that trailer right there, that 26 foot PJ trailer. I got racks I can put on it and then I can have three layers of mums. I can get about 210 after they're you know about that big. I can stack them on there three layers deep and I can haul about 210 mums at a time to so the you, auction and you sell the whole load at one one price yeah well, well well they'll sell usually they'll sell by layers by the layer sometimes i'll take them down there and stack them off and come back and get another load okay yeah and that's the community uh the casey county produce auction yeah casey county produce auction yeah. okay you'll see it if you go down on the creek it's a big sign up by the road cool yeah and that's the same way with the pumpkins we sell down there too so are, are you already selling? When do you start selling the mums? About the middle of August or right. I mean, the way it was, the weather and stuff was, they come in a little quicker this year. Oh, some, yeah. some, yeah. some kinds. So actually my mom took eight over today. Just see what they'll do. But it's too hot for them yet. Oh, okay. I mean, they won't. About the middle of August or the first of September we'll start. And then till the last of September we'll, we're hauling good. So you said your mom took some over, was that for the auction tomorrow? No, today. They had an auction today. They got Monday, Wednesday, and Friday they got an auction here. Okay. Yep. And that's where the farmers to sell out their products. How, how far does people come to buy stuff at the auction? Georgia and everywhere, don't they? Well, for mums and stuff, yeah, there's people coming out of Georgia, Tennessee for the mums, buying trailer loads of mums and pumpkins. So most of the farmers... Most of the stuff being auctioned then, since this is a Mennonite and Amish community mostly grown, many, are there many English to sell there too? I mean, they can. They can. I mean, there's not a whole lot. I mean, there's, yeah, there's, I don't know, maybe a handful or so that, that bring, you know, a box or a couple boxes of beans and potatoes and, you know, a couple tomatoes or something, but there's not a, not a big variety of, you know, coming in from other people other than 
Amish Mennonites. So you got some type of plastic down. That's to keep the weeds from coming growing, I yeah. guess. Ground cover. Ground cover, okay. And then them black lines, they'll feed the water through, and then all them white things are spiders to, to water them. So yeah. I, all I got to do is turn my pump on down by the pond, and it'll water the whole patch. Oh, okay, so the water comes from your pond, okay. Yeah. Cheaper. <laughs> I should get my brother to send you some. He's got, he was up there with his drone and he he videoed it from Mayland? yeah he videoed it from sunday night like when it after it went down and then he was here monday when everybody was here and taking it apart and then tuesday when it was going up and wednesday and, but yeah and then i mean it ain't quite done yet the doors and stuff to put on yet on the horse barn and stuff but garage doors in and i'm waiting on the electrical inspector to get electric in there slow and insulation guy i'm waiting on but so we was just talking there a minute ago and i wasn't recording but she's talking about how the uh, windstorm blew your building down you got it up and your church came together to help you put it back together tell us a little tell the viewers a little bit about that again yeah well, it was a sunday night we was over at the neighbors and about 4 or 30 a big well the neighbors said they seen a twister coming across the mum patch and those mum pots tipped over and some sticks laying out over the mum patch and it tore 16 foot of the left side of the roof back out in the garden where them pallets are and it blew 20 foot of this side the lean to and all back over the thing and flew the thing over towards that gravel pile flat on the ground and then monday morning there was about 70 to 100 people here um carson about 70 people here at a time, probably 100 over the whole day. And we had the thing cleaned up by lunchtime and was setting, starting setting walls and the posts for the lean-tos. And Tuesday, at, we got the rest of the walls up. And at 12 o'clock, we got a crane come in and set the 60-foot trusses. And we set the trusses in an hour and a half. We had a bunch, I think there's 56 people there here that day. And we set the trusses and got the metal on and then Wednesday there was about 38 people coming to help wrap the rest of it up the side metal and windows and doors and trimming around the doors in the front there and stuff well it's just different people from your church and community came yeah, to help Monday was a lot of the community and then then Wednesday or Tuesday and Wednesday there's about all of the church so yeah what is it 97 today maybe yeah Something like that. That's what they were given 90, 95 or seven or something. So, uh, did I see your church? Does your church let you have electricity? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how about air conditioning? Yeah, we yeah. didn't have air conditioning, yeah. electricity, telephones. Yeah. Yeah, we got. We don't have cell phones, but we got landlines. Landlines. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, we didn't get all this lumber the only way we farm we used to live about 30 miles from here and we my dad just farmed with horses and mules well we didn't have a whole lot of ho mules just horses but. so is the excavator yours yeah yeah Ooh. Uh. Cool. I 
that will just keep them from walking off. So you got quite a few horses and mules in here already. Yeah, we got several. <laughs> Gonna measure how tall he is, but some people kind of got an idea. You measure from where they're standing to the top of their top of their withers right there. So that's about 64 here. About 64, six, 64 inches. That one, I think it's just a smidge taller. Every four inches will make a hand, what they call a hand on a horse or whatever. Now did they originally, back in the day, used to measure by just using their hand, you think? Maybe, I don't know why they do that. Uh, that That's just something I've done my whole life. Yeah. That would be about right. About right, huh? How about that? Yeah. Might have been why. <clears throat> I got railings made for in the front here. I'm gonna put railings in front here and put posts in front of, you know, it's a corner area garage door. And put sliding doors on this thing so we can close it up in the winter. So uh, when we was out front there a few minutes ago, we were talking about your produce and uh, your building here that you had to build this in order to comply with the regulations on the produce of being able to sell it. So that was, is that several, is that new regulations just coming in on you all or? Well, it's, they're enforcing it harder, yeah. Enforcing they're, it. They're wanting you to, well, you ask about the four foot concrete walls, what, what that is, and that's basically to separate the barn and then the shop and the packing shed, which is what, what the rest of the building is for. And yeah, they're wanting you to, like if I'd be out here in the barn, they, they don't want, they don't want me to wear the same shoes and go over in the greenhouse because I could give somebody a disease from from being out here with animals. And if they see a rabbit or something running through the greenhouse, I have to flag it. So, or they that's the regulations. I they didn't tell me I have to yet, but that's if they come out and check me, that's what they tell me I have to do. And yeah, I have to have separate boots to go from the barn to the produce shed and just dumb stuff and if a tomato drops on the floor i gotta throw it out and nobody can eat it because it'll make people sick just stuff like that 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 don't make no sense and it's not very practical in our way of, of living or thinking you know yes i understand makes it hard on the small guy don't it yeah well basically that's it seems like they're wanting to to cut us out of it i mean they're wanting they're wanting the ones that big guys and not not all these little guys to be grown produce well the first thing here this is the buggy shed where i keep my buggy and you was asking about my transportation now i didn't get this thing cleaned up yet like it's supposed to so don't anyway right there this is a dog cart just a, a quick hitch cart to hook the horses in and exercise them and it just to strap around the belly and exercise it. And here's a personal buggy. What we use to go to church with and stuff. It's got room for the kids in the back and seats to look forward. It's got, it's got lights and stuff. Well, I see a digital display in here. Yeah. Is that for what's that show? Speedometer and how fast we're going. It's got the degrees on it. 
Back here is a the light on it. So this one, uh, how many years have you had this one? It's fairly new? Yeah, this is pretty new. We only had this one about a year and a half. This actually, this thing was actually in the shed here when the shed went down. We walked over to our neighbors and the buggies, I don't even know how wide they are, but they're wider than four foot. And there was a truss. It, it was sitting in, well, it was parked the other way. And it was sitting in and a, tru a truss was here and a truss was here. They knocked all the mirrors and all the lights on and the trusses was sitting straddled over it. We had a big wagon sitting out front here and the end of the trusses landed on the wagon. And I'd say that's what kept the whole thing from getting smashed. But it was trusses either side of it. It was pretty, pretty amazing that nothing got just totally crushed on it. So if you go to the to town, do you buy much stuff that you like, uh, groceries? You buy much supplies that you yeah. all buy? Yeah, we, we do. We, her mom's actually, her mom and dad has actually got a Laverne's Country Market, which you'll see it when you go. And they, they sell a lot of fresh produce and stuff. And here's where I plan to have my tractors and equipment to fix, which I got kind of bin, or bins in for pumpkins right now. That's the, that's to put the pumpkins in when they get right. But this place is basically the fix stuff to, just to have. And then oh, in here, this where the, after we get it insulated, we got to sheet the walls with metal, insulate it. And over there's a drain in there because they want you to have a drain where you wash all your produce as you bring it in. Like the tomatoes got to go through a washer. Or, I wasn't so far, but like I say, they're they're not they're wanting you to to do some of the stuff, but they're not forcing it yet. But it's they're trying to get you ready for it. it looks like basically it's it's they're kind of they're kind of pointing you if you if you had all that on like you'd be interested in in looking what they got. They're going to be hard on you. I yeah. mean, they are. They they come out and they don't want the animals close to the the building in here and which i'm planning to put an ac unit in here and have it cool where i can come in out of the greenhouse and be at least comfortable so you all have modern you're, you you have more of a modernized church i guess uh, that allows you to do a lot of different things that uh, not old order no more that you got some regulations but you're as long as it does it seems like it seems to me as long as it has to do with your business you, you're it's more open for modern technology. No, no. I mean, we can't have a, you know, computer that hooks to the internet and stuff. We can't. We have them little word processors that we can, basically like a brain or a, a calculator thing that keeps track of your inventory. But you can't. We cannot go on online or look anything, you know, up like you can on a smartphone. We ain't allowed to have that or... No smartphones. No smart. No phones like pocket phones, like landlines and stuff, but not, not, yeah, stuff to pull up. Yeah, basically the basic. I mean, cut the edges off the, of what the people have nowadays. Just cut it off, and where we just cut back a little bit from where you are. I mean, it's not that we think you're living wrong. It's just it's the way we think that's going to be best for our children. Yes, absolutely. And it's not that, you know, there's there's a lot of our people that start driving and that do drive, you know. Like him, that mom and dad, like her mom and dad, they drive and they go to a different church, but we'd still, you know, and then they would have more, you know, electronic stuff. They'd have the phones in the pockets and stuff. So you can't just say, well, they're Mennonites, they do so-and-so because that's not. Every church is different. You yeah. got different. Well, uh, and we got so many variety of people around here. I mean, it's just. Yeah. You can't take a Mennonite somewhere and say that's the way them Mennonites are because I talked to them, you know, yeah. or I seen that, you know. Yeah, but yeah, anyway, that's, this is the packing area and the grader's supposed to come in through there. So the pumpkins, they're probably not so strict on so they No, they're not, they're not near as hard on them. Just have to harvest them and... Oh, okay. So here's some tomatoes you've been packing from your greenhouse. Yep. But tomato season's about over, huh? Yep. It's pretty much over for me. Now, there's a lot of people that have them out in the fields yet. Yeah. That got some out in their fields. 
Now what's these big pipes for? Irrigation? No, that's actually my post from the front of the building. Okay. Like the railing, you can go out and you can see it better. Okay. And here's what I was talking about driving the drive through to drive through with my wagons. And then here's gonna be the grader sticking out and then dump the tomatoes on there and it'll go through and it'll brush them, roll them around and brush them, water them. But yeah, this is for over there in the barn in front of the doors. This is for one side and then we're gonna, we're gonna fill it up with concrete, put it like three foot in the ground. Now this is the tie the horses to or what's yeah. this supposed for? Yeah, hitching the, rail. Hitching the hitching rail. rail right here, these. And then these are just the posts for in front of all the garage doors, you know, like. To keep you from backing into them. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you've got a nice operation here. It's beautiful property, beautiful uh, mums you've got growing out there. Don't, uh, when does the pumpkin start coming in? Uh, about last of September or something. Yeah. Another two months or month and a half somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be coming up. So we were talking about this too. Uh, I noticed this this tractor has doesn't have the rubber tires. Yeah. Well, we that's another thing. Just. The church, you know, we decided to to not have, well, when the tractors first come out, they was on solid steel wheels, like solid. And then when they went to rubber tires, the our church decided to stay with the solid steel wheels. Well, then the people started to farm bigger and had to go down the road, and the road department didn't like that, you know, because it tear up the road. And then they come up with this, where it's not so hard on the road, where it can, it's pretty smooth. On, you can run the tractor wide open and it'll, it's smooth on the road. Now you, you can break loose pretty easy. If you slam on the brakes or something, it's pretty, you go scooting pretty easy, but we go up and down the hill. Well, I got a four drive tractor that's in the shop right now. And it's tore up right now, but that one's the one I use with that trailer and I got brakes brake controller on the tractor where I can go down off the hill to the produce auction. Okay. Yeah, they basically made the wheels so we can still go to, you know, basically make, still make a living if we want to live, make a living on farming. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to let you get back to doing what you're doing. Let Steve get back home to cool off and, uh, I want to shake your hand because I really admire what you're doing here. I love your kids. You got some beautiful kids and, uh, got a beautiful place here so thank you good talking to you and we'll maybe talking to you again later okay yeah.